Hi, Ben Johnson here to deliver this week's High Tech Friday. This week we are going to take a look at how to make a beautiful timeline using a Google spreadsheet and a website called Timeline.js. So I'll just begin with why would you want to use a timeline. You might replace a traditional research paper with a timeline. The same amount of research and uh, writing can go into it. It'll just be on a different format. Uh, of course, you could use this for any history event. Um, naturally lends itself to history probably better than any th other subject. Um, if you're reading a book in your class it includes dates and places you can make a timeline to go with that such as Unbroken or a book uh, along those lines. Science experiments uh, just you could have students do it, their personal story with it. You could have students make portfolios. As a teacher you could run daily lessons through this. Uh, you could have students document progress on say a sabbatical or something like that and uh, scheduling and planning of course. Uh, what multimedia elements can you include? Pictures, movies, maps, articles, really anything from the web can be included in that timeline. What are the advantages? Um, it's shareable. It's going to use a Google spreadsheet so you can have a team of students working on it together um, just like you would anything else in your Google Drive. They really are beautiful. They're free, easy, powerful. It updates automatically as students make changes to the spreadsheet. And then you can embed it on any website or it will give you a link that you can just use as a standalone. All right, so how do you get started? Uh, first open up Chrome and in Chrome just type in Timeline.js. That's the name of the website that assembles the Google spreadsheet for you. And it says first result. It looks like this. Um, if you're signed into your Google account, it'll save you a step, and then you just click on Make a Timeline, which takes you down to the four steps. The first step is to get the template, and as long as you're logged in, it'll take you directly to the template. Now, he doesn't want you to wreck the uh, original template, so you'll have to use this template, which is just going to create a copy uh, for yourself. Um, I would have students go ahead and retitle this, so they might title it My Life, and then they'll hit OK. And then um, if they wanted to share with their classmates, of course, they would just use the uh, share button up here in the upper right-hand corner. Okay. Now, at this point, what I would encourage you to do with students is to have them focus just on these first four columns. Um, don't send them out to get the multimedia until they've uh, populated these first four columns. So I'll just make up some uh, fictitious things. So I might be a student, um, and maybe I would have a birth date of, say, 1199. You don't have to have a start time, but uh, if you're doing an experiment or something like that, you might. You don't have to have an end time. Of course, you could. If not, it just makes it a default length on the uh, timeline. And then you would just put the headline in. So a student might do something like, I'm born. And then here is where they would uh, type in the text. So maybe they'll say they were born, I was born in Loveland, Colorado. All right. Now, if they were doing a research project, um, they could type lengthy passages in this text box, and that's how I would carry out that research project. It might be a little bit easier for students to chunk them into smaller parts like the spreadsheet allows. Um, you could go out and find a picture or movie right now, but I would uh, encourage students to focus on these first uh, four columns. So maybe here they move when they're a few years old. So I'll just uh, continue with the January 1st dates and do maybe I'll do 2003 won't include an end time so I'll just delete that and um, then here maybe I'll say moved to uh, Denver Colorado or maybe here on the headline I would just put Denver and then here I would put moved to Denver Colorado plus whatever details they want to include. Remember this is where the research part portion of the project is going to be and then I would just continue to add more and more dates. So here I'll do 1 1 2007. I'll delete the end date and this one I'll put uh, for Collins. And then here I'll put uh, moved to Fort Collins. Now, um, you might want to encourage students to sprinkle in some uh, personal dates here. So, and one thing I want to point out is that these can be out of order, and uh, 
the website will put them into order. So maybe I want to put uh, 911 here. So I'll do 9-11-2. Um, Two thousand and one, I believe, um, and then I won't put an end date on it. But then I might type here nine eleven, and then I would put uh, the description there. Notice that this date is out of order, but the website will fix that, so not a big deal. And then here, maybe I'll say. Um, some other date, so and I forget one twenty two thousand nine. Is that the date that Obama takes office? Forgive me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, okay. For the sake of time, I'm just going to delete these extra entries. Just highlight, delete those. Realize though that kids could add as many rows as they need to and quite likely they would. Now I'm going to go ahead and go out and find multimedia for these things and one trick I'd like to show you is that you can take the title bar and bump that against the side of the screen and then I can get a new tab and bump that against the side of the screen. Okay, Now for pictures, um, they're really easy to add so I'll just say Loveland, Colorado in Chrome and then I'll just go to images and I'll find a nice image of uh, Loveland, Colorado and I'll just go ahead and click on that picture and then I'll go to the view image which is hopefully going to take me to the full size image. Once you find an image that you like of course you'll just right click and um, grab that URL so copy image URL or you could come up here and, and copy the URL. So now back on your spreadsheet you're just going to simply paste the new address of that photo over the top of the Flickr. If the uh, dialog box here is covering up something, just click off of it and that'll make that go away. And then I could do the same thing with Denver. So I'll do Denver, Colorado. Now maybe this time I want to, uh, I'll just do another picture just to repeat those steps, find a nice picture of Denver. Um, click on that and again just go to the view of the full size image and uh, copy the image URL or grab it up here and again I just come back to the spreadsheet and simply paste that uh, URL there. Now um, if I want a, a map, well in fact let me start with the easier ones, maybe I want a video, video footage of the 9-11 attacks so here I would just type in 9-11 and um, go to a uh, YouTube video and I'll just pause this as soon as it comes up. Now if I want this YouTube video to appear on my timeline again I can just grab that address and copy it and then just come down here and paste it over the top of the placeholder text. Um, if I want a web article um, I can then just come here and type in the topic, so I'll say here Obama, and um, Wikipedia articles uh, come in really nice, so I'll just grab that address here, and the Wikipedia article is basically going to take the first paragraph and place that nicely on the timeline, so Wikipedia articles come in real nice. Um, some other websites you'll need to experiment with. Okay, the last one I want to show you is a map, and that one's just a little tricky if you want it to look really nice. So here I'll just type in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado, and uh, should pull up the map over here on the right hand side that I can click on. And maps are just a bit trickier. Um, I could grab this URL up here, but it doesn't display quite as well as I'd like it to. So on maps and anything else that doesn't display quite right, you come down here to the cog and uh, simply click on that cog and hit the embed map and hit embed map and it's going to give you this iframe code which turns out to display a little bit better on your timeline. Okay, so I'll go back now and paste that map over the top of um, and you can see it's the iframe code here. So anything that's not displaying well on your timeline just go ahead and 
um, see if you can find embed code and that will make it look even better than just the plain URL but you can experiment to see how it looks with the plain URL first and then decide if you're going to hunt for the embed code. Okay, now I'm going to just go to file and I have to publish this to the web in order for it to work and I hit start publishing. Now it gives me this web address for my spreadsheet and you need to copy that. And then you simply go back to your timeline website and the second step is to publish to the web, which we just did. And then the third step is to go ahead and paste that into that box. You can choose the, the size and the height. And there's more options here like the language, where you want it to start at. Um, the defaults are fine, but if you wanted to change any of these, you're welcome to. And then finally down here in step four, this is the embed code that you could paste on your own blog, but it does instead give you this link to preview. And this will pull up the finished um, timeline. And so this is what it looks like. By the way, your kids could grab this address and paste that into your Google Classroom or into a Google Form, and that's how you could collect student timelines. So if I just click through, you can see how an image looks. Um, you can see what a YouTube video looks like. Remember that I put, put this out of sequence, but it's now back in sequence. And then, um, again, another picture. Finally, the map here, and you can see how that looks nice. Had I just grabbed the URL itself, it wouldn't look quite this good. So keep in mind that you can look for the embed code if you want. And then finally, this is the Wikipedia article, and you can see how that looks uh, really nice. Now, any of these artifacts that I click on will take you to those sites, and they'll work um, just like the, the website would. So that's a real quick um, sample of how to make a very beautiful timeline using just a Google spreadsheet and that timeline JS website. Thanks for watching this week's High Tech Friday.